I would like to open the floor for, for the audience and, and maybe some, somebody from my colleagues will offer you microphones. And, and so any questions to, to our panelists? Yes, Richard. <laughs> could, could you raise your hand to, to sh show up again? Okay. I'm Richard Granger from Technology Partners, the consortium of several of the leading uh, applied R&D institutes here in Poland. And I have an anecdote which really builds and illustrates on a point that Lambert made in his comments just now. Um, he said, know who your partners are. And he also commented on how strange it is that so many Western European companies seem to fly over Poland on their way to Asia to look for resources when there are loads of good resources here in Poland. The anecdote from Technology Partners' experience, who I may say actually have been quite successful in building relationships with partners elsewhere in Europe, witnessed, for example, a, a major framework contract with the ADS Airbus. So in here in Poland, doing a lot of leading edge materials research related to research programs for Airbus. Uh, you don't win that kind of framework contract unless you can prove to Western industry that you have something that is worth offering. But along the way, the experience that we've had, uh, uh, that I've seen, as we've been looking for these partners and finding out who partners could be, is that many Western companies simply, for some reason, find it more comfortable to fly to Asia and deal with the cultural and communication issues there than to stop off on the way in a place like Poland or other Eastern European countries. And trying to understand some of the reasons for this suggests to me that there are some very deep cultural issues which block the trans-European partnering, which I think Lambert would like to look for. Uh, there are some issues around communications and inability or an unwillingness to take the risk of trying to communicate across cultures within Europe. And my, the point that I'm now arriving at, and it's, I guess, an open question for all of us to discuss, but particularly for those who are responsible for European uh, innovation policy at regional and EU-wide level, is this. We can spend as much time as we like creating financial instruments, dealing with issues like European patents and all of these things which we all know are important. But none of that will actually work in building these kinds of um, rich networks of partnerships unless we also deal with the underlying issues of communications and cultural uh, willingness to cross barriers, uh, the trust that we need to talk to other people in other parts of Europe. So let's remember that this is not just about uh, mechanistic instruments, it's also about some very deep, soft issues of communication and trust. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And so I would like to say something, I think, especially in Krakow. So, so yesterday we learned so first is that Krakow has uh, about 120,000 students. And the population is, is uh, one million, so 12% so uh, of population are, are students in Krakow. So really it's a very young, dynamic uh, city. And, and uh, in this region, so in Krakow, we have very strong American companies located here, R&D centers, so Motorola, Cisco, some others. In, in this region, we have Aviation Valley, which is practically dominated by American uh, com companies, so Pratt, uh, Pratt Whitney. UTC, uh, and, and so sometimes uh, we, we, we see this, that, that it's easier maybe to, 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 to speak with such a global partners, and, and it's, it's maybe difficult to, to, to speak to our Western <laughs> colleagues from, from other side of Europe. So, so I think we, we should also change this, this pattern, so that, that, that Still, uh, this part of, of Europe is growing, so this, this, there uh, exists a real potential. It is now really supported from structural funds, so, so the, the, the potential uh, ach achieves the, the European level, and it is open for such a collaboration. So this networking in, in the European Union is, is critical also to, to use all these resources available here. Gernot. Just a quick uh, remark on this one. 
I very much value that we have American and other companies here, but my question would be, where is the manufacturing plant built in Krakow? No. Or are we just creating knowledge, taking the knowledge and making the value added for growth and jobs somewhere else in the world? So I think we cannot stop just having a good infrastructure, a good university, and industry is also not flying over, it's just also asking for a kind of package. And if I go to Taiwan, I will get the soil, I will get the investment, uh, the, 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 the manufacturing permits, I get all this quicker. So it goes far beyond than Horizon 2020 and I think regional policy. And I think we have to see how can we make an, an interesting package that Europe is not just creating knowledge for the world, that I wanted to say with the patent issue, and then the knowledge goes somewhere else. We need to take this next step in demo pilot lines in order to, to kickstart this developing a little bit further. Yeah, the, to, two comments on, the, on that in, this, in the same way. Um, well, you know that uh, I saw the picture that we are in Spain in the 18th position in terms of innovation. However, we are the ninth worldwide in number of publications, science, scientific publications, which means, which means that we, we, we have a good structure, good universities and public institutions to provide science, but we are not able to transfer that knowledge into the market. So we say that, uh, in Spain, we say that innovation is VAT. If we don't have VAT, the tax, we, we don't have innovation. We have knowledge, but we don't have innovation. Of course, knowledge should be reinforced, and of course, we, we, we also, in Spain, we, we, we cannot uh, say, okay, we, we did enough with uh, the science, and of course, we have to continue. But it's not the time now to, 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 put, to push on, on, on science. It's the time to push in innovation. And the other comment is that uh, we uh, don't have instruments uh, matching the innovation needs. Uh, until now, what we have done is to uh, support innovation with R&D instruments. And it's a little bit different, basically, at least in Spain. And, so it, and that is something that we need to, to, to take into consideration uh, sooner or later, especially at the level of the member states. When we deal with innovation, we are, uh, in some cases, uh, in the limited of the state aid uh, uh, considerations. So it's something that we need to, 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 think, uh, to think about this if we need to, 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 to be a little bit, a little bit more in, in innovation. And my last comment is that uh, in terms of Europe, in terms of Spain, of course, uh, uh, this, uh, the key issue here is interaction. We need to cooperate, we need to interact, uh, regions, companies, uh, SMEs, uh, universities, but inter interaction is, in our opinion, the key word for the coming years if we want to succeed with the innovation. Thank you. I, I wanted to ask something. You, you rightly mentioned that um, innovation goes far beyond Horizon 2020 or the structural funds. Another speaker said about the culture and attitude. Certainly, without, we can have big Horizon 2020, we can have big structural funds. If we don't change the frame of conditions, uh, we are lost. This is why the Commission, I'm sure the audience knows that we have been uh, making proposals, for example, to amend the public procurement directives. We have an unexploited source of growth, an unexploited source of innovation in public procurement. We are not, member states are not, we are not innovative enough in our public procurement. This is why I would strongly plea for support, for example, for this change in the directive the Commission has proposed. That will be, in, I wouldn't say easy, but one way out of exploiting the knowledge we are creating in Europe to be used in Europe, for to, and it will have two good consequences. One, the, we will have uh, commercial uh, success, and we will, be, uh, we will be fulfilling the needs of the citizens. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, two, it's a double game. There, when we are, for example, thinking, and our ideas are most welcome, how to valorize all the unused patents that we have in Europe. 
because that's another thing. We, we, we spend our time counting patents, counting citations, but if these patents are not used for anything, uh, we are not much further. We are thinking how to exploit these unused patents. Any, as I say, any ideas are, are good. Uh, speeding up the um, legislation to set up businesses. That's something on which we have all to work. So indeed, sometimes we discuss a little bit too much about the monies, but we discuss too little about our own attitudes towards what's going on. So, uh, just, just a second, this one item I would like to elaborate more is this networking. And so I remember from, from the, the previous framework programs, uh, I mean uh, one, second, and third framework programs, fourth framework program, that the, the topic of, of, of networking Europe was, was very important. So it was one, one of key ingredients of, of this, this uh, for, uh, uh, former framework program. So there was a special instrument called uh, thematic networks. Then we had some, some, some attempts to do this, uh, creating networks of excellence. And I think in, in FP7, uh, we, we had these regions of knowledge, so, so networking of clusters. So this continues. And, and, and for sure, we need some, some uh, instruments of, of, of networking, Europe, not connecting Europe, but networking in, in uh, R&D and, and innovation activities. So, but today, practically, this is not foreseen. So, you cannot use structural funds which are regional or, or national so, so to, to do, do such, such a networking. So from my, my side, you I think can, we should you can. Why, you why can not? have money, oh, but come anyway, on. You, you need something at a European level to define. Come, to, on, to come on, I think that we should not prescribe in Brussels how to act. People are here. They are the game changers. If you are not aware of the fact that we lose position in the world so quickly, if you are not aware that we do, sometimes play the wrong, let me say play. We, we have to do it. And there are the possibilities, as I showed, that, that we are in fact upstreaming the, 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 the instruments in regional policy. No longer for, let me say, easy infrastructure like roads or things that, that can be necessary in some situations. But for instance, in the richer um, areas, this is excluded now. Parliament says, let's bring some uh, additional infrastructure back, ICT for instance, this is a debate. So what we should do is stop this debate that you can do it, write it down, come up in this thematic concentration and it's possible, and I totally agree with Mr. Klotz who said that in fact we think that with investing that huge amount of money in free floating intelligence over the world, we, we give away our jacket, we give away our trousers. They say, okay, it's okay. It's not okay. This is the key disease of Europe. Spoiling your talents and knowing or not realizing that we were 20% of the world population after World War II. We are now 10% and will, in 30 years, we will be 5 to 7% of the world population. We have to be smarter in our approaches. And what well, Esla said, yeah, there are hindrances in Eastern Europe. Wow, there are even bigger hindrances when we talk about the Euro debate, etc. Here we have an opportunity to, to, to use, like, like you have in, in, here in, in Krakow, but also in Lodz, in, in Vorozhlov, in all those other places, in, in, in Romania, in, in the other countries. We have these uh, centers that we might much better use and not use in just having a kind of a, a project that, that flies away after three years and is evaluated. No. Give companies, give universities the possibility to have a structural cooperation for seven years as we talk about the European Union. No, for 14 years. Come up with more structural policies that, that, ha that, that fit in the new era. Sometimes the heading one in the European budget, that's now debated. You know, everything's on growth and jobs is there. In the same heading, not having cohesion something for the poorer regions to make them come into the common market, these old stories. No, it's all in heading one, the investment plan, European plan for growth and jobs is, is there. So we should have one debate also with the member states in these investment policies. And I think European Parliament is 
ready to make this step. Stop the debate of the cohesion as additional. No, a, a cohesion is more enabling those actors in the, in the local and regional situation to get in, to click in into this world and European-wide competition. And this is the, 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 the game changer. When I talked this morning about game changers, we should not repeat what we did in the last 10 years. We should, we should uh, get uh, companies, private money in. In the, f in the past, we said co-financing is with the uh, public money. We did this, co-financing, because then the countries uh, came in with their money and we knew that the things were done, like roads, etc. Now, we can't wait for public money. There is no public money. But there is a, a chance and an opportunity to say, oh, company, can you come in? Then we can do things in a better way. We can do it quicker. We can do it in a more pilot phase to get more downstream in the, 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 the fabric, the factory of the future. Because we have to think about new products. If we don't think and realize it, it will immediately flow away to other parts of the world, to India or whatever, or the United States. So, in some way, this is the, the thing that, that Parliament is aware of, let me say, the changing world and the other, the other answers. We, we, we don't know everything because we, we, we just have the, the legisl legislation done. This is our task in European Parliament. But I think the awareness is growing quickly and it, it cannot be accepted that, uh, that, that the money of the research is going now for 90% to the old member states. Oh, wonderful, excellence. But excellence is nowhere if you don't bring it together with participation from every region. This is also in the treaty. Territorial cooperation is in the treaty. So th there is a need to, uh, to modernize our instruments now. OK, we will, we will do. There are good proposals from several sides. We had the two commissioners online this morning. So let's, let's, let's take the chance. No. So last, last words from, from panel, uh, panelists, uh, Gernot. Yeah, just coming back to the, to the proposal or the, the example I used on this public-private partnership. There's clearly a discussion at the moment between industry and the commission. Now, the commission puts some money on the table and the industry is putting money on the table. It's also committing to build the first pilot line in Europe and it's also committed to leverage these kind of funds by a certain factor in order to create then business from this one. And I think that's the model we have to go. Create a coalition of the willing, don't give to everybody. The ones who are willing to play in Europe should play in Europe because if the market is already somewhere else, there we go anyhow. Because let's be careful. No, the industry at all is investing around 80, 800 billion euros in research and innovation every year. The chemical industry, 80 billion. So, don't get me wrong, Horizon 2020 is a lot of money, research uh, regional funds is a lot of money, but it can be just a spot on going forward. And working in triangles, maybe I would take the opportunity to, to mention also that the Commission is putting up another communication which is on key enabling technologies and it's coming out in June, July. So I think that would be also interesting reading so that you have Horizon, you have the regional policy, and you have the CATS, which really goes then into what can we do in pilot line it tackles issues of state aid rules, you know, European investment bank role, uh, risk capital funds, you know, these kind of topics. And therefore, I think if we bring this together, I think we have a, a, a better way forward. And Okay, so I, I think that the, such a very strong messages uh, were uh, given by, <laughs> especially by Lambert, so, so for, for our conference. So we have two, two days uh, debate now uh, for in front of us, and, and I think this message that, that you are the, the game changer, so, so you are now responsible for, for discussing the, the, some, the transformation, transitions, or how to use uh, in optimal ways all available uh, public money from, from Horizon, from, from uh, uh, cohesion policy, and, and from other national resources. So, so th this, this, uh, this session opens debate. So please use uh, this as, as, as such a foundation for, for discussion, and I, I, I would like to thank our, our panelists. 
and, and I, I wish fruitful the debate and, and be sure that, that some recommendations, some, some final uh, findings from, from the conference we, we transmit to the Commission, to the Parliament, to the Member States. So thank you very much.